Minuteman ICBM, a powerful force in America's arsenal of defense, and one of the mainstays of our nation's military deterrent strategy. In August of 1974, as part of continuing efforts to expand our missile technology and to complement our present missile force, it became necessary to demonstrate that an ICBM could be successfully launched from an aircraft and fired in mid-air. Two months later, that question had been resolved by a multi-command air force and industry task force of highly qualified aircraft and missile experts. This film documents the efforts of that dedicated task force. It was a project requiring a complex interfacing of expertise in many exacting areas from testing parachutes to evaluating the overall compatibility of both missile and aircraft systems. For never before had such a heavy single load been even airdropped, let alone positioned and fired. Two unmodified U.S. Air Force Lockheed C-5A galaxies with standard ADS aerial delivery system kits were used throughout the demonstration. Under the management of the SAMSO, Space and Missile Systems Organization Deputy for MX, the Aeronautical Systems Division and Lockheed were responsible for aircraft and parachute extraction aspects of the project, with SAMSO, TRW, and Boeing responsible for the missile portion of the program. Operations were conducted at Edwards, Hill, and Vandenberg Air Force bases and the El Centro Naval Air Facility. Early in the program, it was decided that six dummy loads in increasing increments of weight should be dropped before the air launching of three full-size missiles, the last being equipped for a live burn. This would allow the already demonstrated airdrop capability of the C-5A to be gradually expanded from a 40,000-pound payload on a 28-foot platform to the required 56-foot, 86,000-pound missile payload on a 46-foot platform. During the same build-up phase, rigging procedures and techniques for aligning and loading the large loads were evaluated, thus ensuring the interfacing and fit of the Boeing ICBM cradle platform to the C-5A. At the National Parachute Test Range at El Centro, California on September 6, just one month from the first Air Force planning meeting, the first significant step in the program was achieved, the build-up and drop of a 45,000-pound dummy load. Four days later, the second drop of 55,000 pounds was made. The load consisted of two 18-foot weighted steel tubs on a 42-foot platform, rigged with a 32-foot extraction chute and 10 100-foot diameter recovery chutes. During extraction of this load, as in all drops, roller loads, ramp support, link loads, pitch angle, and other aircraft response data were measured. During the drop, pilot input was minimal and airframe response normal. At an altitude of 20,000 feet and a speed of 172 knots, extraction of the load was entirely normal, except for a flexing of the platform resulting from a lack of rigidity where the two tubs were butted together. This flight set a new world's record for a single load airdrop, surpassing the old C-130 mark by nearly 5,000 pounds. September 13th, the next sequential drop was the last to be rigged with recovery chutes and its weight of 65,917 pounds was known to exceed the load limit of those chutes. As with all build-up loads, a trial fit of the platform prior to loading the aircraft assured no discrepancies between the ADS rail and the platform interface. The extraction chute inflated properly, providing a successful extraction. But the platform flexed again at the junction of the two tubs, this time at an angle much greater than in the previous drop. And as the recovery chutes deployed, they suddenly blew because they had overreached their load limit. For purposes of the demonstration, the extraction was a success, even though the load went into a free fall and disintegrated. A week later, weight had been built up to 77,484 pounds. 
and the flexing characteristic of the platform had been corrected by welding the two tubs together along the sides and top with steel splice plates. Recovery chutes had been eliminated and loads were now rigged with one 32-foot extraction chute and three 32-foot stabilization chutes on top of the aft tub, thus allowing the platform to hang vertically in the simulated missile launch position. At this successful point in the program, a milestone had been reached. For the next drop was to be a load of 87,800 pounds, more than the weight of the ICBM, and scheduled to be the last build-up drop before utilizing the missile itself. September 23rd. The 87,000-pound package had been loaded and rigged with no problems encountered. Extraction chute was released at 174 knots at 20,000 feet, and the extraction force buildup was smooth, releasing the locks. At this point, the extraction chute failed, and the load already moving had to be jettisoned. This contingency had been foreseen, and as the package moved aft, the pilot input four degrees of nose down elevator to check pitch up, and after a pause, increased to full nose down elevator. When the platform cleared the ramp, the pilot took corrective action to prevent nose-down pitch during recovery. The jettison was satisfactory, but without stabilizing force from the extraction chute, the load tumbled excessively. The stabilization chutes finally deployed at a 90-degree angle to the platform, inducing violent pitch-up and disintegration of the package in mid-air. This chute failure was not without benefit, for it verified emergency procedures, provided valuable stability control data, and prove that 87,000 pounds can be safely jettisoned from the C-5A. To eliminate dependence upon a single chute, a series of tow tests were run to qualify a cluster of two 32-foot extraction chutes on a newly available 10-inch circumference nylon rope. Deployment characteristics and forces of the new extraction configuration were measured and evaluated. After measuring the force on the extraction line, the chutes were jettisoned. And on September 26, the final build-up load of 86,000 pounds was ready to go again. Rigged for extraction, this time with two 32-foot chutes and the new 170-foot double-braided nylon extraction rope instead of the old 150-foot 12-ply nylon straps. The airdrop was excellent in all respects. The extraction force buildup was typical of clustered chutes in that it was gradual until the restraint locks released. A smooth, uneventful extraction followed, and the three stabilization chutes deployed, lowering the package to the ground in the correct position. This was the last dummy buildup drop, clearing the way to the final phase of the demonstration, missile airdrops. The missile phase of the program called for three missile drops, two inert and one live. All missiles were loaded aboard the C-5A at Hill Air Force Base using the BMT, Ballistic Missile Trailer. Platforms for the missile drops had been fitted into the aircraft prior to installation of the cradle assemblies. Transits were now being used to align the BMT with the aircraft ADS rails, and since the BMT had also been used to load the last five buildups, no significant problems were encountered during the loading of the missile. The first missile drop made at El Centro was a Minuteman trainer known as the Iron Bird with a guidance and telemetry package for transmitting pertinent data to the ground station. Purpose of the drop was to learn more about missile characteristics relative to loading, missile cradle separation, missile response, timing sequence, stabilization during descent and extraction trajectory data. Extensive electromagnetic interference tests and both ground and flight dynamic response vibration tests were then run on the aircraft missile combination. These tests determined that electrical interference would not detonate explosives on the missile and that dynamic coupling of vibrations between aircraft and missile would not cause damage during taxi or flight. The 85,405 pound missile load was rigged in the same manner as the last buildup drop with the stabilization chute sequence to deploy following the missile platform separation four seconds after the package left the ramp. 
Aircraft responses during extraction were again minimal. Clean separation of the missile from the cradle was accomplished by the firing of explosive nuts which secured the straps and tension rods holding the missile to the cradle platform assembly. The airdrop witnessed from the cargo deck by the commander of SAMSO was near perfect in every respect, with separation of the missile occurring as programmed. Only one undesirable factor was observed a rolling oscillation of the missile as it was suspended from the stabilization chutes. This condition was corrected by modifying the rigging on the second inert missile drop, which was successfully made two weeks later at the Western Test Range Vandenberg Air Force Base, California, thus setting the stage for the final test. Preparation of the live missile to be used was accomplished shortly before loading at Hill Air Force Base. It was provided with a first stage motor with sufficient propellant for a 10 second full thrust burn and a 20 second tail off and was equipped for ignition. The second and third stages were inert. By this time in the program, systematic loading of the missile had become almost routine. The package was rigged in the same way as the number two missile drop, equipped with die markers and marker beacons to aid in location of the cradle in the water. The timing for separation of the stabilization chutes was set for 48 seconds after the missile was to clear the ramp, with ignition two seconds later. This timing ensured a stable missile attitude and allowed the C-5A to be well out of range. And on October 24th, just seven weeks from the day of the first test, the feasibility of the air mobile ICBM concept was determined. In the words of mission control, initial deployment was smooth with a good package extraction. And a clean release on the extraction chute. We've got full inflation on the chutes and the missile cradle package is moving on out. Everything's smooth. Very good, very good. It's a clean extraction. Very nice, a stable platform in flight. Coming up on explosive bolts, coming up on explosive bolts. Mark, there go the bolts. And we have a clean missile separation, it looks like. Very good, very good. There it is. The stabilization chutes mounted on the aft end of the cradle have deployed and we have the missile stabilized. Stabilization chutes are separated from the missile and we're coming up on a burn, coming up on a burn. Hey, we've got ignition, ignition, and everything looks good. Downward motion of the missile's arrested and it's in an upward flight. Hey, it's really climbing. Oh, beautiful. Oh, if we only had full burn, hello quad. Just like we planned it that way. And justly so for the entire program was indeed a massive exercise in planning and cooperation. As every objective of the air mobile feasibility demonstration was successfully met ahead of schedule. Another first in aerospace history, accomplished by a dedicated task force under the direction of the SAMSO deputy for MX. Because of their efforts, a concept can become a reality.